In the world of advanced military aviation, a new challenge has emerged for the F-35 Lightning in the form of its engine. Despite its impressive performance, the Pratt & Whitney F-135, which powers all three variants of today's Lightnings, is facing a critical issue. Insufficient cooling to support the ever-growing demand of advanced electronic systems and weapons. Let's take a look at how the F-35 could be entering an engine competition midway through its production run that involves two industry titans and why things are starting to get hot. All right, so here's the deal. All electronic devices generate heat. It's just a natural byproduct of electrical current flowing through them. Now, when it comes to smaller devices like your trusty cell phone, they use passive cooling methods. That means that heat generated by the processor is dissipated using thermal interface materials and the phone's casing acting as a heatsink. Works like a charm for low power devices. But when we step into the world of high performance electronics, like PCs and even fighter jets, things get a little more intense. You see, these power hungry machines need serious cooling solutions to keep their electronics from overheating. PCs rely on cooling fans to circulate air and keep the components cool and some high-end ones even use liquid cooling systems. But let's talk about fighter jets. These bad boys are packed with advanced electronic systems, especially fourth and fifth generation aircraft. Now, fifth generation fighters, like the mighty F-35, are essentially flying data centers. They process an incredible amount of information to deliver sensor fusion, which is crucial for their operations. So you can imagine the cooling requirements for these electronic systems are through the roof. To tackle this challenge, jet engines play a vital role. They extract compressed air and pass it through heat exchangers to transfer heat away from the electronics. This diverted airflow is known as bleed air and is an essential component of jet engine design, especially for fifth generation fighters like the F-35. Now let's talk upgrades. The F-35, designed to serve well into the 2070s, is constantly undergoing enhancements bundled in what we call blocks. We've had blocks 1, 2, and 3 so far, but the latest and greatest is block 4. Block 4 brings a ton of improvements, including significantly more computing power, processing power, and memory as compared to its predecessors. These advanced electronics are going to need even more cooling capability, and this is where the engine comes in. The original spec for the Lightning's F-135 engine allocated 15 kilowatts of bleed air extraction to support cooling requirements. Pratt & Whitney designed the F-135 engine to this spec and built in an extra margin for future growth. But the cooling requirements have increased significantly since then. In fact, the F-35's Joint Program Office, or JPO, which oversees development and sustainment of the fighter for the US and its allies, has stated that the cooling capacity of the current engine is wholly inadequate to support the Block 4 package. On top of this, a Block 5 package is already being designed and estimates show that the cooling demands for this upgrade will be 20 or 30% more than what Block 4 requires. Even for Block 3 Lightnings, the engines have had to run hotter for longer periods than intended, which has resulted in higher maintenance costs and reduced lifespans of the engines. In response, Pratt & Whitney, the company behind the F-135 engine, has come up with a solution. The Engine Core Upgrade, or ECU. These upgrades can be applied to existing and future built F-135 engines, which power all three of the F-35 variants, the Air Force's A model, the Marine Stovall B model, and the Navy's carrier-based C model. More on that later. Pratt & Whitney's ECU is intended to work alongside additional power and thermal management upgrades, or PTMS. But wait, there's more. Collins Aerospace, a division of Raytheon, which is the parent company of Pratt & Whitney, is also developing an enhanced cooling power and cooling system called EPAX. When combined with the ECU and PTMS upgrades, they're confident the F-35 will have a whopping 80 kilowatts of cooling power more than enough to meet the cooling demands for the lifetime of the F-35 program, including Block 5 upgrades and beyond. However, here's where things get interesting. The Air Force has been exploring new engine options for the F-35. 
under the Adaptive Engine Transition Program, or AETP. These next generation engines are designed to dynamically switch between high performance and high efficiency modes depending on operational circumstances. Hence the term adaptive engine. General Electric has their prototype, the XA100, while Pratt & Whitney have their version, the XA101. These adaptive engines could potentially boost the F-35 speed by 20% and increase its range by 30%. Plus, they offer double the thermal management capabilities. Talk about a power-packed upgrade. While the adaptive engine seems like a good fit for the Lightning, there are some significant challenges to consider. For starters, the F-35 fleet would now have to maintain two different engine designs from two different manufacturers, making maintenance and sourcing of parts difficult to say the least. Additionally, the XA-100 and XA-101 were designed to fit inside the Air Force's F-35A variant, and while it could also likely fit inside the Navy's F-35C variant, the short takeoff and vertical landing or Stovall F-35B variant that the Marine Corps uses would likely need significant modifications. There's even some doubt as to whether an adaptive engine could fit in the F-35B at all, so you're faced with an additional layer of maintenance and support, not to mention the cooling issues already faced by the current engines. On top of this, if an adaptive engine cannot be designed for the B model, then you may be stuck at Block 3 for the lifetime of the Stovall version. Still, the GE XA100 creates an engine competition for the F-35 just as it is entering what many see as the midpoint of its production run. With several NATO countries recently selecting the F-35 as their fighter, coupled with over 900 examples built and counting, the F-35 production line has many years left in producing new models, let alone ongoing support. There is little doubt that the GE or even Pratt & Whitney adaptive engine would be beneficial to the F-35. But the upfront costs and ongoing maintenance challenges associated with the adaptive engines may not outweigh the additional improvements they offer. So for now, it seems Congress is leaning towards Pratt & Whitney's ECU upgrades for the existing F-135 engines. According to Raytheon, these upgrades will cost around $2 billion, but will save a whopping $40 billion over the F-35 program's lifetime. That's some serious bang for the buck. This does not mean that the adaptive engine program is dead, however. It is very likely that these next generation engines will be used in the next generation air dominance or NGAD fighter. In fact, the Air Force has stated that it plans to leverage findings from its ATP efforts into the next generation adaptive propulsion or NGAP program. Interestingly, the Air Force seems to be leveraging NGAP to help expand the U.S.'s jet engine industrial base beyond the two current players, Pratt & Whitney and GE. In fact, NGAP contracts have also been awarded to Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman, and Boeing, all of which have not been historically involved in jet engine manufacturing. So it does seem like the Air Force is aiming to diversify and expand the U.S. jet engine industrial base. All right, guys, we've covered a lot today, but it's all about keeping you up to date with the latest developments in the world of fighter jets. The Block 4 version of the F-35 is going to be a game changer, and it'll keep pushing the boundaries of fifth generation fighter design until Block 5 hits the scene. Stay tuned for updates. And finally, if you'd like to learn more about the NGAD fighter, which will almost certainly use adaptive engines, then check out this video here. Link in the description below. Now you know.